time value of money is the concept of money increasing in value over time. It all has to do with interest. So if I invest a principal amount today, in the future I hope to have principal plus interest. That's what time value of money is all about. So what is simple interest as opposed to compound interest? Well, interest is the rent paid for the use of money, and we're looking at principal times rate times time. The most important thing to remember is interest will always be stated annually. So if, you're, if the term is less than a year, you have to prorate that interest rate. And looking at some, some, just some basic examples, a comparison of simple versus compound interest, as you can see, simple interest is just only earning on the original principal, where compound interest, think of interest earning interest, so you can earn much more money. And that's what time value of money is all about. If you need to calculate present value, you want to know what it's worth today. If you want to calculate future value, what's it worth in the future? And that's with the removal or the addition of compound interest. So when you add to get to a future value, you're compounding. When you're removing interest, it's actually called discounting. So you may hear the term interest rate. You may hear the term discount rate. It's the same thing. Different tables depend on where, you're, where you are in your studies. In a fundamental accounting course, accounting principles, you're introduced to the basic ordinary annuities. So you will use four tables. In an upper level accounting course, intermediate accounting or advanced accounting or even business finance, there are a couple more tables, and that's called an annuity due. So it depends on where you are when you're viewing this video. Think of these tables as the accounting cheat sheets. Now, math majors have to memorize the algebraic equations to calculate present and future value, but accountants are smarter than that. We know how to create and use tools. So think of the tables as tools to make your math simple. I is going to represent the interest rate and end the compounding period. So you have to understand these basic concepts in order to read the tables correctly. Looking at interest, remember interest is always stated annually, so what is my I when I'm reading the table? It depends on how often it compounds. If it compounds semi-annually, which is most of the cases when we're dealing with bonds, that's going to divide by 2 because it compounds twice a year. So if the interest is 12, you need to use 6 for your I. If it's compounded quarterly, divide by 4, and monthly, 12. Common Commonly what you'll see with notes is an annual interest rate, but it might be compounding every month for your monthly payments. So an interest rate of 12 would represent 1% I monthly. And for N, instead of multiplying, you need to, or instead of dividing, you need to multiply because you need to know how many compounding periods. With bonds again, semi-annually, if it's a two-year note, it will compound twice a year, so your N is going to be four. If it compounds quarterly, eight, and monthly it would be 24 for a two-year note. So what exactly is an annuity? It's going to be a series of equal payments at equal time periods. An ordinary annuity that is introduced in accounting principles, these are recurring payments at the end of the period because you're focusing on learning the basics of bond financing and how to record that on your balance sheet. With an annuity due, this is recurring payments at the beginning of the period, and this is taught at a later level in intermediate accounting and then at business finance classes. We're thinking it's recurring payment at the beginning of the period. So what's the difference? When would I use an annuity due? Mostly with capital leases, because when you rent, you usually have to make your first, first month's rent payment the first of the month. So that's how I would value that on my, on my balance sheet. Again, a summary of the different types. Both are introduced in this video. If you're in accounting principles, you're going to focus on just two of them. You may have an introduction to future value, but what are these used for primarily in 
out in the real world, we need to value things on our balance sheet correctly today. So I need to know what it's worth today in the present. I'm taking a future amount and discounting it to what it's worth today. Later in upper level courses, you'll be introduced to a second one. So if you're in accounting principles level watching this, focus on the basics. If you're in an upper level course, you will have a good review of both. And again, a summary. Interest payments, timing differences, that's the only difference. Ordinary annuity, the payment is at the end of the period and annuity due is at the beginning of the period. And interest is going to accrue on a daily basis. So we're talking about how, how much will accrue depending on when those payments are made. Make sure you understand N and I. Now what table do you use? That's the next question. Well, it depends. What are you solving for? So let's look at future value first. If you have 2500 to invest today, how much will this grow in two years at 16% compounded semi-annually? What table do I use? Well, what are you solving for? I know what it's worth today. I'm investing 2500 today. That is the present value. I'm solving for future value, so I want to use the future value table. So how many compounding periods total? Two years compounded semi-annually, I'm going to use 4 for N. And interest rate, how is interest always stated? Annually, so I cut it in half. I multiply the N and I divide the I. So now let's look at a table. How do I read this? Well, I know what N is and I know what I is. I look at the column for 8 and then I match it with the row for 4. This is the table value. This is how you read this. You do not have to memorize any equations as long as you know how to read the table. This is our accounting tool. So I take 2500 investment today, multiply it by the future value, and I solve. I now know that in two years, 2500 invested at 16% compounded semi-annually will be worth $3,401. Okay, now let's look at this from the present value. Let's say we don't know how much to invest today, but I know I need approximately $3,400 two years from now. So what do I put in the bank today? It's two years, same example. What table do I use? Ask yourself, what are you solving for? Do you know present value or do you know future value? $3,400 is two years from now. What's it worth today? If I'm solving for present value, I use the present value table, and this removes compounded interest, and this is known as discounting, stripping away interest from that future amount. That future amount contains principal and interest. So now I'm looking at the present value of one because it's a one-time payment. It's not a recurring payment. I go to n. I go to my i is eight. My n is four. Notice the table value is different on the different tables. Also notice every one on the present value of 1 is less than 1. It's 0 point something. And that should make sense if the future value represents 100% and that 100% has principal and interest. If you're removing interest, it's going to be less than 100%. So let's run the math. 3400 in the future times the present value table, approximately $2,500, right where you started with that other example. This is what the time value of money is all about. They're just tools that accountants came up with to make the math easier. So now what about an ordinary annuity? Number of compounding periods, 4. Interest rate, 16. So I, N is 4, I is 8. This was that two-year annuity compounded semi-annually. And this is the focus of what you need to learn to account for bonds. So now I look at the PVA table, the ordinary annuity table. Go to the table. What is I, what is N? There is my table value, 3.31213. So 
So that $1,000 compounded semi-annually, what's it worth today? Now this should make sense. If you are getting $1,000 times four payments, that's a total of $4,000 in the future. What's it worth today? It better be less. Now there is an alternate calculation. You don't have to use the present value of an annuity. It takes a little longer. But if we look at the present value of one of those four payments, so my first payment in one year, you can see the 0 0.92593, and then in two years, 0 0.85734, so the farther out it gets, the more we discount it. Okay, so now we're going to solve for an annuity, but we're using the present value of one, and this is just a kind of a trick to show to help you understand where the table values came from. So if I use the present value of 1 and I add up all those table values, I get 3.31213. Add the dollar amount. Okay, now let's look side by side. It's the same amount. So if you take, if you use the present value of 1 in periods 1, 2, 3, and 4, add the table values, it equals the same table value from the present value of an annuity, 3.31213. That's where the present value of the annuity tables numbers came from. So the annuity tables are just an even a, a more faster shortcut than using the present value of one.